Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. Today I'm going to be making flange binding for a quilt. So if you want to know how to use these strips to make a great binding, please stay tuned. So this is the quilt I have just finished quilting. It's the Busybody quilt. Um, and so if you have, haven't seen the video about these blocks, you can look at it now. Um, take a look at this quilting. Um, you can see that I use kind of a, um, I guess kind of a little pointy swirl or like a C pattern that I doubled back several times to complete. Um, if you'll notice the end here, the edge is not quite finished. That's what we're going to do today. Also take a look at the backing fabric. I picked it up at a quilt store in South Georgia. So there's the backing fabric so pretty and what we're going to do today is um, make the binding for this we're going to use the flange binding which is a type of uh, piped binding it looks like it's piped so here's another quilt that I've made it's my um, argyle quilt and the part that I want you to really pay attention to is the binding this binding is um, part of it is strip pieced this outer portion here is strip pieced and so all the way around the quilt it's a different color um, or different colors, but the uh, the flange is this blue, it looks like piping that goes down the quilt. So that's what we're going to be making today. And I'm going to use two colors um, for this binding. We're going to start with a um, the Kona Snow that is already in strips, and I've already pieced these together. And this is going to be... Um, the main part of the binding, but my piping is going to be the same as my backing fabric. So the cone of snow is um, it's cut at <coughs> one and a half inches and um, already pieced together with a 45 degree angle. And then the um, the background fabric or my backing fabric, this is cut at one and three quarters. So and this will be the piping. So the piping has to be a little bit wider um, again this is one and a half inches and then this one is going to be one and uh, three quarter inches and you want to make sure that however number however many strips you would need to go around the uh, binding you need to cut that much of each of these uh, fabrics so for example for this one um, I used eight strips and if I was going to do a regular binding I'd use eight strips but for this one um, I still need eight strips of each one. So eight of this and something like eight of this. This is really pieced. It's all scrap. Um, so let me show you how to put these together first. You are preparing these um, strips to put together at the 45 degree angle. What I've done is taken, uh, we would consider this one like my top piece. And I've kind of angled it down under the needle. Uh -oh. <laughs> and then the next piece is going to be kind of headed up, facing up. All right, but the pieces are right sides together. And I'm just going to stitch a diagonal seam from the top here to the bottom. Okay, and so you can see that. Machine isn't really cooperating there we go. Okay, and I'm gonna hold the needle down and then just add another piece. Again, the top strip kind of goes down and the next strip kind of goes up. Okay, and then I'm gonna sew that same uh, diagonal seam. Okay, then you'll notice, let me cut it. When you pull it out and open it up, it's going to give you that the pieces are joined together. I'm going to cut away this part here, this out extra is going away, and then I'm going to press the seams open. I will be right back. I have my strip, everything sewn together, and what I've done is I've pressed the seam allowances open on these, so both on the cream, which is one and a half inches, and the one and three quarter inch um, strip. 
So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take these and I'm just going to place them right sides together, stitch a quarter inch seam down one side, and I'm actually going to press it towards the smaller fabric, which is the white. So it's going to look something like that when it's done. Let's go to the machine. I have my um, strips sewn together, both colors, and you can see here the um, that backing fabric is here, and then the uh, cone of snow is there. And what I've done is I've pressed it to the smaller fabric. In this case, it's the um, the white, um, and so I press it towards there. And then what you want to do is you want to measure it to make sure that um, because you're going to need this measurement later. So I'm just going to use my mat here to measure the, the width of the strip and I have one inch, two inches, about two and three quarter inches. And so I'm just going to kind of keep that measurement in my head um, to um, for later, okay? After this step, what you're going to do is you're going to fold this over itself and press it. And I've already started at the other end. So here's the open fabric. And then you're just going to fold it wrong sides together and press. And you should see just the um, your piping fabric or your flange fabric just giving a little peekaboo over the edge. Okay, so I've done that only about this far. I'm going to finish um, pressing this and then we'll get ready to actually put it on the quilt. I have my um, binding strip folded over and pressed here. And I hope that you can see the peekaboo uh, piece coming through the top. That's going to be our piping um, in just a few minutes. So I want to talk for just a second about thread. I'm using this variegated uh, yellow and orange thread because it blends well with um, my backing fabric. And that's going to be important both times, it, both when we sew it to the back and when we sew it um, on the top when we finish it on the machine. Typically, I would um, sew my binding on the front of the quilt on the machine and then finish it on the back by hand. But since I'm doing the flange binding, I'm going to actually stitch it to the back of the quilt first on the machine. And then I will go back and finish the front also on the machine. Okay, so that's one of the cool things about this flange binding is that it's finished by machine um, instead of the hours that it takes to do it by hand. Okay, so I'm getting ready to fix this on the back of the quilt. I'm going to place the um, smaller fabric against the back of the quilt so that when we fold it over, we'll have our um, piping show through. Um, I'm going to leave a tail of about six to eight inches, so about this much. So when I start stitching, it's going to be about here. Um, I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam all the way around the quilt. I will take some time and show you how to do the quarter the corners. So just taking the whole back, so all three layers here and my binding fabric under the machine quarter inch seam all the way around. I'm going to um, finish putting this binding on. I've put it on three sides. So um, this is the last corner and I want to show you how I do the corners. The first thing I'm going to do is sew to the the edge of this, sew down till it's about a quarter inch left, then I'm going to take it off the machine. I will be Taking right back off after the machine. I and so the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you where I sewed it. So it, there's about a quarter inch left. Can you see that there? And so in order to make the corner, I'm just going to fold it up at like a 45 degree angle. So it makes that little 45 degree line and then fold the top down so that it is flush with the side. And I'm moving it over, okay, so, all right. And so then I'm gonna sew straight down a quarter inch from here and go all the way down to finish it out. Okay, I'll show you that again. 45 degree line, straight down flush with the edge, sew a quarter inch, inch down, that's gonna give you um, the miter corners that we want. I'll show so you those. I have in just all the bindings sewn except for these last little bits. 
So in order to put the last little bit together, what I need to do is overlap each of these little flaps. And then I'm gonna measure the measurement from earlier. Actually, I had to cut this down to two and a half inches. It was two and three quarters, so I cut it down an eighth of an inch on either side. So now that it's two and a half inches. And so I'm gonna take my two little ends here and I'm gonna overlap them two and a half inches and then I'm gonna cut. I'll use my ruler here. Let's see. So there's the overlap area. And so here's one inch, two and a half. And so that's where I'm gonna cut the longer strip. Okay, let me find it again. One, two and a half. Let's see. Right there. Okay. So now what we're going to do is take this and then we're going to open up this and put these right sides together. Make a 45 degree stitch line and then I'll show you what it looks like. Here it is with this uh, 45 degree inch seam line here. There's the line. The, a yellow thread. So now I'm just going to cut these extra parts off and then sew it down. So we're on the, the very way. last step. There's the back of the binding. And so now what I'm going to do is just start pulling it forward. Okay. And so when we fold it over, we're going to see that piping show through um, on the edge of the quilt. So you'll see the the white background and the um, the piping. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in is I'm just gonna stitch in the ditch here. And so that's why my thread is gonna match this, that variegated yellow and orange. And then when I get to the corner, I'm just gonna fold it up. Okay, and you can see that that nice little point is going to form um, and that's gonna give us our miter. So I'll do that and I will show you the final quilt. The quilt is finally finished. I just wanna show you um, the binding. You see that you can see that piping. And here's the backing. And you can see the back of the piping there. So if you have any questions about the video, please leave them below. Give us a thumbs up and thank you for watching.